Hey guys, it's Dustin. And Jeremiah. With Tennessee Woods and Water. And, and we're here to talk to you today about, yeah, Jackson's off camera playing a game, I think. We're here to talk to you today about something really important to hunting. Um, it's about to be muzzleloader season, rifle season. So um, it's about time to start going to the shooting range. Hopefully you've been going some already, but if you haven't yet, we're going to talk about an important topic today that a lot of people have a lot of questions about. I know when I was a new hunter, I wondered a lot about it. And that's shooting rests. We're going to talk about six different kinds of rests today. And some of these are specific, but ultimately there's a lot of different types of these same rests. So we're going to start out with one of the simplest, which, is, which are these here. These are just heavy bags or shooting bags. So essentially you take your rifle and you put it through this middle here on your shooting rest at the bench or at the range, your bench at the range, and it would hold your rifle for you. I don't care a lot for these. If it's the best you have, it's the best you have. Their adjustability is, well, they're really not adjustable. You can put more bags or you can put something under them, but I'm just not a big fan of them. Moving on to this, this is something called a mono rest or a solo rest. It's very light. It's, uh, it's a little flimsy. It, reduce, it doesn't reduce any recoil, and, but it is adjustable. Uh, you might not be able to see it on the video, but there's some little feet up front. You can adjust those feet up and down. You can, uh, there's really no option on this one to adjust windage. But you can adjust elevation, so you can raise it up and down, but you really can't adjust it left and right. Um, I don't like solo rest, and if it's what you have and it's what you use, that's fine. You can make it work for you. You can make any of these rests work for you. I just don't like the solo rest. The last I checked, they're between $49 and $79. I wouldn't spend my money on a solo rest. I, I wouldn't do it. Um, this is one of the easier rests you'll have. And now, this is just a backpack. This is my hunting backpack that I carry. This is my everyday backpack. Um, you know, just my everyday I hunt. I'm gonna carry this with me. But you can, you know, a lot of times when you're in the field, if you have to stop, sit down or lay down and take a shot, you can take the rifle. You notice we have a chamber flag. Hopefully you're not doing anything with rifles in your house without a chamber flag. But you could take this on a bag and lay on it, prop up, and really get a nice steady surface. And so this will be the last of our uh, shooting rests that don't go in the field. And this is our favorite rest. Um, this is our newest one we've got. You may have seen the unboxing video for it. This is our uh, lead sled. This is called the DFT2. Uh, I won't go into too many specifics of it. We'll do a review of it specifically later. But these are recoil reducing rests. They have great um, they have great elevation adjustment. They're very easy to shoot. They can reduce recoil by 80 to 100 um, percent. They're a really great round if you're going to spend a lot of time at the range with those Magnum rifles, shotguns with slugs, uh, powerful muzzle loaders and you want to reduce the recoil and you're spending a lot of time getting soap, scope sighted in, or maybe you've got some new shooters and they want to learn the mechanics of shooting, but they're nervous about recoil, so you can take one of these. But they're great. Um, but the mono rest with solo rest, the specific Caldwell shooting bags, or the lead sled here, these are all for shooting at the bench or at the range, they're, they're not really made for the field. So you have the backpack, which is, um, you're probably already carrying a backpack, so you could start practicing with that some if you're at the range. But my two favorite for shooting in the field, over here in front of Jeremiah, you'll see it, that's a Primo's trigger stick, that's a mono stick. Um, it adjusts, I'm not gonna guess, because I'll tell you wrong, but it's perfect, for, um, it's perfect for an adult man to shoot up and down. And if you're already pretty confident in your offhand ability, it's quick, it's easy to shoot, and it's reasonably priced. But the one down here that you can see in front of us on the floor is my absolute favorite 
all around. That is a, um, it's a bog pod, field pod. Different people make a similar rest. It collapses, it adjusts. You can adjust it up and down, left and right. You can tilt it. You can, you can adjust it for multiple size rifles. I'll do a review on it later on. But it's really my favorite rest. There's two downfalls. It's a little expensive. It's going to cost you, depending on where you buy it, between $120 and $150. Um, I think it's a little fragile. You know, if you, were, uh, if you were doing a lot of hiking and you fell and landed on it, that thing would be gone, I believe. But uh, a couple of my favorite things are, we actually use that at the range, too. Until we got the lead sled, we were using the, the field pod at the range. One thing I love about the field pod is you actually hold the rifle, you feel the recoil, you get the exact sensation of shooting the rifle, except it's helping you hold it up. So we can use it at the range and we can take it afield. When Jeremiah started hunting with me, um, it was very imperative that he had some kind of rest to shoot with. You know, or you may be a new shooter. I've shot for many years. Um, I was comfortable shooting, not offhand. I don't recommend to ever shoot anything offhand unless you absolutely have to. But I had practice in many different positions without a rest. But when Jeremiah came along and he started hunting when he was six, I mean, he was really young. A lot of the rifles were heavy. He was strong enough to hold them up but he needed some help. So my favorite out of all these rests for the field and the range, it's going to be, it's going to be the bog pod all around for everybody. If you're an experienced hunter and you're just a spot and stalk guy and you want a little something extra to help you with, I strongly recommend the trigger stick. That's just the, that's just the, the mono or the single. It's just a telescopic stick up and down. But now, if you're really looking for something at the range, and, and you, like I am, and you have a big family, and you really want to spend some time at the range, and you want to practice load development, which is important because we hand load, and you're putting a lot of scopes on rifles or you know shotguns, things like that, if you're shooting a lot of rifles that generate a lot of recoil, you know, you know muzzle loaders, big muzzle loaders, like we shoot 90 grains of powder, our muzzle loaders don't, don't have a lot of recoil. But I know some of my friends are shooting magnum charges, and they have a lot of recoil. If you're in a state where it's shotgun only and you're shooting a lot of slugs, you're going to have a lot of recoil. Or if you're a Magnum guy and you're shooting 300s, 338s, you know, you're shooting 7 mags and you want something to reduce your recoil, we highly recommend this lead sled. But beyond anything, I can't encourage you enough to make sure you have a good steady rest when you're at the range because you need when you're at the range to be able to get your scope and your weapon your, and your ammunition dialed in as close to 100% as you can. You've seen a few of our videos at the range. We're trying really hard to get great groups. I like to shoot my groups touching. Not all weapons can do that. Not all shooters can do that, and that's cool. But pick something, go to the range, practice your best, and then make sure you have a plan, whether it's shooting off a bag, whether it's shooting off a fence post, whether it's shooting off your own knees, or whether it's something like the field pod or the trigger stick. Just make sure you have a plan when you get out there because, you know, you don't want a nice deer to come out in front of you, a nice bear, a nice elk, whatever you're hunting, and not have a chance to shoot something. We use our we use our shooting rest in the field also when we turkey hunt. So just consider it. Like I said, again, the best economical decision. I know we talked a lot about economics. We're worried about the cost, worried about the money. And a lot of times when I'm talking to my wife and we're discussing what can we spend money on this month or this quarter for hunting, money comes up as the number one factor. So if you're saying, okay, I want to buy one item that's going to go the farthest, your bog pot. It's going to get you in there. It's going to get you in the field. It's going to get you at the range. Now, if you're, if you're only hunting and you need something, I recommend this trigger stick. They work great. But you know you and you know your family's needs, and we've just discussed a few of these items, and I encourage you to decide what you like the best. But Jeremiah, do you have anything to say about all these? Hmm. Um, well... I, I've only used, I've not shot, I've, I think I've only shot off of the bag and that, but I think. Oh, the bog pod, you mean? You yeah. shot off the bag and the bog pod, okay. I think um, this would be my favorite because I don't like shooting our muzzle loaders that much because they have a lot of recoil. And so we haven't shot this one yet, so I can't wait. One thing I want to say really quick about the lead sled, um, I've not shot it, so I don't know exactly how it's going to feel. I have a concern that it changes your length of pull. 
you can see here, you know, at the end where the rifle butts in, you've got a you know a couple inches of padding. That's one way it reduces the recoil. And I'm not 100% sure that shooting this at the range for long periods of time is going to give you the same sensation as something where you're actually shouldering the rifle. But we're not for sure. Hopefully, we can tell you more about that in the future. But I'm going to tell you, I encourage you to get to the range, to pick something stable. Even if you can't buy any of these things, don't let that slow you down. Just do the best you can. And most importantly, what, Jemma, what do we say? Always have fun, but be safe. Get out there and find your fun. Bye. Make sure to like and subscribe and ring that bell. That's right. All right, this is Dustin. And Jeremiah. And Jackson. With Tennessee Woods and Water. Bye. Bye.